All right. We will uh, we'll get going here. I know it's the end of the day for everyone and uh, a ton of information that's gone through. Um, so I'd just like to thank Jim, wherever he is, for having me go last at the end of the day and for 20 minutes. <laughs> um, so uh, my name is Ian. Um, I was with Volleyball Canada up until last month uh, as the high performance director for the sitting volleyball programs. Um, I've done a lot of these presentations at coaching symposiums here in Alberta and BC, um, across the country. And we've talked a lot about sitting volleyball and the skills and the tactics and trying to introduce people to the game. And what I wanted to do here today, um, again, because I have 20 minutes, is make it more experiential. So I'm going to encourage if as many people as you would like um, to come on out to try the game. Um, and the point of this is we've always talked about incorporating sitting volleyball into indoor training um, as a warm-up, as an off-day activity, as a recovery activity, because obviously there's no jumping. So if you played in a premier tournament, um, Saturday, Sunday, Monday you've got to practice, what does sitting volleyball look like? Okay, There's no jumping, all the skills are the same, it's a fun activity, right? and it's just that kind of rest recovery day. The feedback I always got though is that, well I don't have a sitting volleyball net, I don't know how to play sitting volleyball, um, it doesn't really work for us. So this is our sitting volleyball nets, I wanted to demonstrate this. Seems simple, seems basic. As a warm-up ac warm activity, we could have tied these off to the posts, to the ball carts, whatever it is, a piece of, or some ribbon, uh, it was two bucks at Canadian Tire, and this is perfect for a sitting volleyball warm-up. Okay, so I just want to share these concepts. We're very, uh, we tend to be very structured in, in Canada and within Volleyball Canada, and my message for sitting is just play. Just play. We have national teams. Uh, obviously, it's a, it's a Paralympic sport. Um, our women's team right now is sixth in the world. Um, they're trying to qualify for Tokyo. Uh, just came back from World Championships. Our men's team is about 13th in the world. Um, quite a few more teams competing on the men's side. Uh, they're also trying to qualify for the Tokyo Games. So that structure, uh, we have training camps. We're based here out of Edmonton. Um, and to compete internationally, an athlete must have an impairment. But what we really want to start achieving is having more people playing, period. Across the board, across the country. Club teams, able-bodied uh, athletes, just get people playing. Okay? So that's the point of this session. I'm not going to talk a ton. Okay? That's kind of my brief introduction. Um, but what I want today is for people to come out and start playing. So we have the ribbon set up here. That's the net. Okay? Um, we can extend it. If we've got all 77 people here that want to come out and play, we just extend the ribbon. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> okay? um, a sitting volleyball court is typically six meters, um, six meters wide by 10 meters long, five on each side. Okay? Uh, so it's about the size of a bad doubles badminton court. But for today's purposes, um, we're just going to go the depth or the width of our standing court. So this blue sideline here to that blue sideline there. Um, standing court is nine meters wide, so we're just a little bit short of a sitting depth. Um, the sidelines, we'll just make them narrow, okay? Because we're going to play some two on two, some three on three. Again, just play, okay? Uh, there is a version of, of sitting volleyball that's actually just came out that I wanted to touch on uh, that is three on three, and there is some structured rules. Uh, there is a structured court, and it's competed internationally. Um, more on the youth side, um, we're experimenting with some U21 competitions and, and quite simply there's not enough uh, not big enough population of athletes with an impairment to always be playing six on six especially men and women in one gender so what what was decided at the international level is to create a set of rules for three on three so it's exactly almost what we're going to do here the depth of the court is the same it's 10 meters but the width is four and it's three on three there's a set of rules it's kind of adapted a little bit from the beach um, standing, where there's no positions on the court, players can play at the net, they can play in the back court. The only thing that matters is that the service order is kept the same. So that's pretty new, you probably maybe haven't heard much of it, um, but I know one of my, my tasks before I left uh, Volleyball Canada was to try and get some pilot projects going in the country, um, because it's a lot easier to get six people out to play than it is necessarily with 12. Um, so. It's just ways of being creative. It doesn't have to be six on six with a, 
sitting volleyball net system and sitting volleyball lines down. It's just getting people out and playing. So that's way too much talking for me already. So what I would like to ask is if you're, um, and hopefully some people come out, if you're interested and able, um, come on out, find a friend, find two other friends, and let's start setting up for some two-on-two. -two. You can grab a volleyball, and I just want you to experiment a little bit with some continuous play across the net. So don't be shy. So the concepts are still the same, three hits per side. We have a front court, a back court, but we want some continuous play here. Okay, so hold up just for a second. I love the enthusiasm. Okay. But one of the hardest concepts of sitting volleyball is the movement. So that's why I really wanted to do the two on two. This is awesome. <laughs> okay. But there's a lot of people sitting around. Okay. And so let's split up into two on two. And a new rule is after you play the ball over the ribbon, you have to switch front court, back court with your partner. So we, we get some of that movement and trying to figure out how to move on the floor. All right, so two on two, switching front court, back court. That's fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can even go three on three, but no more. Okay, so those that are watching or even as they're playing, I want us to watch how people are sitting, how athletes are moving, uh, yeah. what their bum is doing, is it in contact with the ground? Okay, everyone, hold the balls for a second, please. All right. Awesome. So, group here observing, what are some things that we saw quickly? Okay, so there was a lot, unfortunately, of athletes that were lifting their bum up off the ground. Okay, going on their knees, propping themselves up. The rule is, is whenever we make contact with a ball, okay, whether it's attacking, whether it's passing, our bum has to be in contact with the ground. Okay? So the signal by an official referee is, is quite simply this. It's a, it's a lift call. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The other thing, from a coaching perspective, okay, and myself, I, I used to coach our men's team, and then I moved into the high performance director role, but coaching sitting really changed my perspective on how I coached indoor. It forced me to be more analytical. It forced me out of my comfort zone to watch skills. I couldn't just go and look at the binder and be like, this is how we pass. It didn't exist. Okay? So I really had to be creative, work with the athletes on developing some technical cues. So coaches here and coaches on the court, what are some things that we've picked up on? Let's focus on the movement. Okay? What are some, some techniques that we maybe did well and some te techniques that we maybe need to do a little bit better? What's something right away? Ready positions. Anyone? Okay. So when we're in a ready position, we want to have a limb, if possible, loaded. Okay? And what I mean by that is we want to make sure that if possible, and if the athlete has a, has a limb, is that their foot is flat on the ground and the knee is bent. Because from this position here, I can push or pull in any direction. Okay? Obviously, we may have some athletes uh, that are lower body amputees, double lower body amputees. They're loaded with their hands. Okay? So we need to be loaded, have something on the ground that we can push in any direction. 
That's our ready position. So if you use this as an example, this is pretty much it right here. Okay, just got one foot on the ground, hands would maybe be down for some extra support. That's our ready position, okay? Not to pick on you, this is not an ideal ready position. <laughs> From that, what else on the movement piece? Something as coaches, put our analytical hats on, what can we pick up on? Okay. Digs, yeah, but I want to move. I got to get to the ball. I think Keith mentioned pursuit. How do I pursue the ball? <laughs> yep. And what else though? Why do we have this leg loaded? Push. Push, push, push. All right. And how is it easier to push most often? Backwards. Thank you. All right. So most of our movements are playing a little bit higher, all right? And then pushing backwards aggressively. All right? When we're trying to move forwards, we can either push from this position or we can plant our heel and pull but we're slower and it's a little more awkward, okay? So let's go back out to playing, same drill. Coach is here, we've got our coaching hats on, watching some techniques. More on the side, to the side, yeah, yeah. So we can watch our ready positions, their movement patterns. Sorry. Okay, coaches, let's look at the actual volleyball skills. What are they doing with the forearm pass, overhead pass? How are those similar? How are those different? Okay, awesome. Hold the balls, please. That looked a lot better already. Coaches here, what did we see? Any feedback? Okay, good. All right. What about the actual volleyball skills? So the volleyball skills are the same. Forearm pass, okay, overhead pass, attacking. But what did we notice here about some of the volleyball skills from our groups? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. I want to, yeah, yeah, I want to touch on this first comment here first. I don't know if it's totally gone out the window, okay? Yeah, you, this group's working hard. They're working hard, all right? But it is unorthodox, all right? It is unorthodox. Forearm passing in sitting, if we use an example here. So if she goes to forearm pass, what's, what's changed here? The floor's in the way. The floor's in the way. I don't have this range in here in my forearm pass. Okay? So the athletes learn to adapt to change their platform angle. Every, a lot of it's outside of the body. Okay? And it may not be the perfect platform, but we're teaching them that the platform is facing the target. Okay? So it's not, I call it textbook. We're not opening up the textbook and saying, this is how you have to pass. Because the other unique thing about my experiences is this athlete could be a lower body amputee, below knee, above knee, uh, double, um, arm, left arm, right arm. Right? So I need to teach this athlete how to forearm pass, no matter what, right? no matter what. So I need to be creative, I need to work with them to, to, to find a way that works. So it's not the textbook, hey, this is the one way. Right? Absolutely, a lot of one arm passing. It's hard moving. Right? These athletes, it's hard moving, so we actually train a lot of feel. Okay, how do we pass one arm right, outside our body in front? Okay, our feet. We train our feet. It's, our foot's right there. Might as well learn how to play the ball, so to speak. Okay. Um, good. Anything else technique-wise? What's that? Precision? Precision. Yep, yep. So with that execution piece, the game is probably more based on errors than even indoor is, 
and I heard some of the other coaches talk about error management and that our game is 95% error management. Right? And yes, there is attacking, right? it's aggressive, it's fast, it's dynamic, but it's almost more of that, uh, to use Keith's term, that yellow light zone, right? where it's managing a ball that's out of, out of system, in trouble, put it in a spot where the other team has to move. That's the biggest thing because the movement piece is so hard. Okay? The other comment that I just want to make here, and I, my 20 minutes is rapidly going by, uh, is the overhead pass. Okay? Our hands are on the ground okay, to move. We're playing on a net that for the most part is at head height. Okay? So 80% of the contacts in sitting are overhead contacts. But my hands are on the ground to move. All right, so we really need to train that reading, reading the play, right? uh, cue reading, decision making, which we talk a lot about those in the development course. We'll talk about uh, cue reading and decision making to put myself in a position so that I can take my hands off the ground and play the ball. Okay, and I saw a few on that, that court down there. We had the little bit of the, the butt slide where our hands were up, ready to play the ball. And I was in the wrong position, and it was this. <laughs> It's not efficient, and it's hard because we're so used to using our feet as our outlet. Oh, well, I'm a little bit out of position, no problem, I'll take two steps and play the ball. But when I'm sitting on the floor and have to use my hands to move, okay, it's more of a challenge. And our athletes are, you know, if you ever have the opportunity to come out to the Savile Center um, where we train, it, it, it's fast, it's dynamic, they're pursuing balls out the back of the court, like, no offense to this group here, I know you're working hard, but our range is probably here, okay? Our athletes' range internationally is here. They can pursue a ball two, three, four meters outside the back of the court, bring it back into play, and we get a transition out of it, okay? Because of that movement. But they've trained those new movement patterns okay? and using their hands in the curing and decision making, okay? Yeah, so question was if we do a lot of weight weight training, uh, conditioning outside of the volleyball. A lot of our conditioning and training is not so much on the power and the strength building, it is a little bit, but it's on the mobility. If you look at how some of our athletes are sitting, this hurdler stretch position okay, is really awkward on the body. Our athletes are probably in that position 85% of the time. So we do a lot of hip mobility, back mobility, shoulder mobility, okay, and started, our physiotherapists have started doing some research into the balance between the left and right, <coughs> excuse me, sides of the body. Because everything is so one side dominant. Okay? So we've actually worked on starting to train our athletes. If you're right handed, then we train you to hit with your left hand. A okay? little bit performance, but more to balance out the body. Because as our teams are competing at a higher level, okay, and this is training two, three a days, um, but what we're finding is that they're becoming very one side dominant. Okay, and we need to try and correct that. For your context, if you set this up in your club practice, okay, this is probably what you would see. The risk of injury is very low. Okay, it's fun, it's play. Okay, the comments around that are at the high performance level where we're, like I say, training six, six hours a day. Okay. Yep. Uh, so sitting as a sport originated in Europe in the 50s. Um, and it originated for injured soldiers from World War II. Um, in Canada, it's only been around since 2007-ish. We used to have a very successful uh, standing Paralympic program, um, world champions, Paralympic silver medalists, um, but there wasn't enough nations competing in the standing, so the International Paralympic Committee removed it from the Olympic, uh, Paralympic Games and added sitting. At the end of it, I think there were six nations competing in standing para. And right now in sitting, we have over 60, uh, six zero nations competing. So 2007 to answer your question. So in the grand scheme of things, we're 60 years behind everyone else. <laughs> so that's part of these presentations and that as well is we, we need some support, uh, and my role is, is transitioned to Volleyball Alberta now, but I'm still very passionate about the sitting program and, and the opportunities in Canada. And we have now a pool of athletes um, that are either at the high performance level um, or at the grassroots development level that need places to play. And a lot of feedback in that that we've got from clubs is, 
but we don't have the equipment, we don't have the resources, and I just wanted to share <coughs> excuse me, how simple it is to set something up and play. Um, and, and if there's a, an athlete or an individual in your community that you know of that has an impairment, bring them out and play. Oh, it's, it, we're not, national team stuff is fine, it's awesome, but that sport participation piece is huge. And so if there's an opportunity for them to come and play with your club team or, or your school team or, or whatever your contacts is, awesome, awesome. That's what it's all about. And it, honestly, it can be as simple as this. And it, yeah, the nets are a little low, but for kids, this is perfect. Any other questions? It's probably pretty close to time, hey? That's Jim right there. I could have used another 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> Any other questions? Awesome. Thank you very much.